Hello, and welcome back to White Glove Watches. My name is Bo. Today I'm going to be doing a review on two of my favorite little chronos, the Seagull 1963s. So I do have two different versions of these. This is the sapphire version, and then this is the original acrylic. The only real difference is, well, there is a slight difference on the face. This is a little bit golder. This is a little bit more silver but both have 38 millimeter cases. They're both 46 millimeter lug to lug. They both have 18 millimeter lug widths, but the original acrylic is 15 millimeters tall, whereas the sapphire is only 13. Now today I'm gonna to look more at the sapphire just for ease of use and because this is the one that I wear the most. The straps they come with are horrible. These are not expensive watches, so I have both of these on beautiful little Colorebs. Um, thank you, TGV, for getting me addicted to those things. These watches you can pick up for, the price is very wildly. I've seen them as low as 150 on different websites and as high as 500. I have heard some reviewers say that, oh, you know, it's, it's only a real one if it comes from this certain factory. But from what I can tell, they're made in three different factories, and the only difference is the box they come in. They all have the same movement, which is this beautiful seagull movement. I really love this thing. I especially love that you can see it move. If you watch right there. It's just an absolutely beautiful movement. They're both hand-wound only. They're not automatic, which I do like that. I don't have a lot of hand wine only watches, so I do appreciate something a little bit different. I love the dials on these watches. You wouldn't think it would all work as well as it does, but it goes together just beautifully. You have this lovely light champagne dial with the gold applied hour markers, the anodized blue hands. They're definitely not heat treated, but they pop very well and they play with the light. The red second marker within the red star behind it. Very classy, very classic. This was a pilot's watch, so I'm surprised there is zero loom on it. I mean, there's nothing, but that's okay. I mean, I'm not a pilot. I'm not gonna wear it for that. I really wear it more as a dress watch. Take a closer look at that movement. Let me flip it around so I can use it, even though it's upside down. I think it's just beautiful. Let's see if I can get it to work. There we go. Hit it again to stop it. And then reset it. The case finishing for being a cheap Chinese watch is very, very good. You can see this one does have a few little scratches on it, but not a whole lot. I try and keep them nice. The pushers and everything work well. I will say, trying to wind this one on the sapphire, compared to trying to wind this one with the acrylic, you can see the crown is almost pushed in a little bit further on this one. So it is a little bit difficult to wind. You know, it doesn't bother me at all. This one works just fine. It's just I gotta use my fingernails more compared to this one where I can just grab it really easily even with gloves and just wind it up. The other main difference is you can see this champagne is just a little bit darker than this. I don't really know what else to say about this watch other than if you're looking for an inexpensive chrono this is a great size. Let me pop it on the wrist. And even on my larger wrist, it wears quite nicely. I've seen it on smaller wrists and it's perfect. It's very versatile. It's really lightweight, so you don't, you really kind of forget it's there during the day. My overall thoughts on these two? Well, I have two of them. Um, that should tell you how much I like them. I bought these Sapphire first. I wore it for a while. I've had these for a couple years now. 
and I just, I, I loved it so much that I really wanted the original acrylic type version. They wear beautifully, they're inexpensive. The straps they come on are pretty bad, but I replaced the straps on almost all my watches anyway. But you put one of these on a nice Colareb, and it really brings the watch to life. They go well on a NATO, I just don't personally like NATOs. I mean, I like the way they look, I just hate the way they feel against my skin. But I love the distressed leather look on the watch. It makes it look more vintage. These were originally designed as the Chinese fi fighter pilot watches. So I think it just kind of goes better with it. Will I buy them again? Oh yeah, obviously. Um, I have two of them now. If either one of them were to ever break or get lost, I would replace them in a second. Um, I will probably always have these in my collection. Owning both of them, I believe I like the acrylic version a little bit better, even though it's a little taller. I can't really tell you why, it's just it has a slightly nicer feel to it. I love the sapphire, this is the one I wear the most, as you can probably tell by the uh, state of the strap. But if I did have to pick just one of them, it probably would be the acrylic which is unusual for me because usually I basically require sapphire on my watches because I don't like to get them scratched. So yeah, I mean, highly recommend. Um, if you look on AliExpress, don't grab the one that's 500 bucks. You know, find one that's 150 to 250. I believe when I bought these, they were 250 a piece, but since then I have seen them from, say, Red Star watches for about 125, 150. So yeah, I mean, absolutely. A recommended watch and that's about it thank you very much for watching if you enjoyed it please hit like and subscribe and I'll see you next time